lesson 17, which is 18 in the textbook. El le, el le, these, these, compare this with the, masculine, zot, feminine. To le dot, to le dot, generations of. To le dot, compare this with me orot, me orot. Mongadim, Mongadim. It's got two syllables. To le dot. It's plural, feminine, never found in singular. The absence of the dagis lene in the d here shows us that this here is a vocal schwa. To le dot. Um, if this was a silent schwa, there would be a dagish here, and the syllable would end there, but it doesn't. The syllable ends here. To le dot. Behi ba ram in being created there. Behi ba ram. The b here is pointed with shva. The am at the end is the same as se ba am there. Behi ba ram. Note here, it's katal, but katala. So we have here hibbare, but hibbaram. So the ultimate e is volatilized when arm is added. Hib barre has dug his forte. Hib barre. And this here under the first radical. These are the characteristics of the nifngal or passive stem. Hib barre. And this is an infinitive construct. And it's governed by the preposition b. Here. B in being created there, in there being created. Nasot, nasot, to make or making of. This here, in Hebrew, we do not pronounce it. Um, we call it the Shem Havaya um, in Rabbinic Hebrew. So if we're referring to this Yud He Vav He, we call it Yud Ke Vav Ke or Shem Havaya. In a text, this is read as Adonai. Um, so, as we say here, it's read as Adonai. And we wouldn't write this out in this form. Um, we just put a He with a dash after it if we were writing, and this form is only written out in holy documents. And an Orthodox Jew would never pronounce it this way, because that would be forbidden. Siach, shrub of, siach, one syllable, siach, because this here is a furtive patah. Has sade. Has sade the field. So this is a regular has with double sade. This mark here, which in most biblical texts is actually a little diamond shape, not a dot, um, is called the rebinga. Um, it's a musical note or an accent. 
has sade, and it marks a secondary section of a text, just as this accent here does as well. Terem, terem, not yet. It's an adverb. Terem. Yitzmach, yitzmach, will sprout forth. It will sprout forth. Yitzmach. It's kal, imperfect, third person masculine singular of tzamach. He sprouted forth. This is a pausal form. It's got the etnach here. And so this vowel is lengthened. It's mach. It's made heavier. And also we have the scatural. Um, here. And it has in pause a rather than o because of the guttural. Here we have ish boat. It's not it's more, it's it's mach. Lo means not. Lo. Him tir. Him tir. He had caused to rain. Him tir. Here we are three radicals matar he reigned matar and the prefix he originally ha indicates that he feel perfect him tir he had caused to reign note that this ha form usually indicates the hifangil perfect and this is the preformative, as we saw before in Yabdel, Tad She, Habdil, Mabdil, Mazriang. And here it's Himtir, not Hamtir. Ayin, it's a noun meaning nothing. Ayin, but it's always used as a verbal expression meaning there is not, there was not. So the phrase means a man was not and there was no man. There was no man to do what? There was no man to langabod, langabod, to serve, langabod, to serve. Compare this with langasot and limshol. Ngabod is kal, infinitive, construct of ngabad, he served. But the ngain has this short vowel, where the mem of mshol, similar in form, has the shva. That's because it's guttural, and so it has a slightly longer vowel. The preposition lamed takes the patah, la ngasot. La Nasot The Ngid the Id the Id and a mist the Id and a mist Ya Nale Ya Nale he will go up it will go up so a mist will go up or used to go up the Yem is the um, prefix of the imperfect and here we can see that it's not quite clear how to translate this imperfect form um, the root is ngala ngala he went up here we have the vowel yud um, and the vowel under the yud in Yish bot and Yitzmach is the Shirik, but in this word it's the Patach because here we have Ngayin, Yangale, same as we have here, we have the Ngayin, so Langasot. 
Just as an original patach is retained under the preformative of all hifengil forms, except the perfect, where it has been attenuated to i, him tir, not ham tir. So an original patach has been retained under the preformative of the kal imperfect before gutturals. Yish bot, the first radical has the shva, but in ya ngale it has this a ah, because of the ngain. The imperfect here expresses customary action as in common action in past time, so it's not a future. Min from. Um, it's written this way before the article. Otherwise, it's me with the dagesh forte, me um, if there's no dagesh forte afterwards. In other words, there's a letter that can't take the dagesh forte. The hishka, the hishka, and used to cause to drink. Vahishka. Compare this with himtir. Himtir. Vahishka. So it's a hifil perfect as indicated by he. The root shaka. Shaka. The vav here is a vav conversive or consecutive. And it gives the verb the same force as the um, verb in front of it, which is why it's called the verb consecutive. Yang ngale. Yang ngale. Which we just saw before. As we've seen several times already, um, a guttural will take under it a compound rather than a simple schwa, so the vowel is slightly stronger. And before it, the vowel patach, rather than i or o. The hefingil stem has, under the preformative, the vowel patach, we've seen this many times, tad she, for example, except in the perfect, where it has been weakened to the hirik. Um, the vowel of the preformative in the kal imperfect was originally this patah, but this only survives in front of gutturals. Everywhere else it's he. The kal imperfect may have for its stem vowel either o or a. Um, in the cases we've seen before, note patach in front of aleph, and in pause, it has been heightened, or I say it's been made heavier, and it's become, there's a, a weight to the syllable, it becomes ah, while before he, it's uh, been increased to e. The patach furtive steals in under the final gutturals, so it comes under these. Ang, ah, ah. Where they are preceded by any long vowel except for this one. Ah. Uh.